We're starting to see more AI powered stuff entering the audio marketplace. Mostly it's been mix focused stuff like Isotope and Sonable and that sort of thing. But a few companies have started releasing AI powered sound design tools, specifically drum samplers. They're pretty, um, they're, um, look, AI is coming for us all. It's going to take over. It's going to destroy our lives. It's going to incite panic of biblical proportions. Come on. It's in revelations, people. AI powered drum machines are very cool and I like them a lot. Let us look at a few. So when we're talking about AI assisted drum samplers, what exactly are we talking about? Um, you could say that it's just using machine learning to create new drum samples and that's sort of at the core of it. Um, but I mean, how is that really different from just hitting a randomized button and getting something, something out from that? Um, well, we've got a couple of products that instead of just randomizing things, use, uh, trained models of data to generate specific kinds of drum sounds. And, uh, that's really what we're talking about here. We've got two new products that have recently hit the market that, uh, use uh, trained data sets to generate uh, different kinds of drum sounds. The The first one is called uh, Emergent Drums by a company called Audiolab, and the other one is Mace AI by a company called TensorPunk. They're both pretty much first-generation products, although uh, Audiolab just announced that Emergent has hit the 2.0 uh, release mark. And uh, Mace is still like 1.16. Audiolab, I know, is going undergoing a lot of active development. They have a pretty large user community and uh, a pretty active user community as well. Um, Mace seems to be a smaller shop, uh, so it's probably not getting updated as much. But they're not really directly competi competitors. They're not competing with each other. I know that the, the CEOs of both companies seem to know each other and exchange ideas, but... They're really sort of targeting different kinds of things. Emergent is a product that really seems to be going for quote unquote production ready drums. So maybe not something that's going to sound like, you know, a real live drum set, but something that's going to be a more familiar traditional drum machine territory. Uh, Mace seems to go for more weird kind of out there glitchy percussion sounds, which you know, for someone like me has a lot of use because I like that kind of, uh, that kind of vibe. Um, if you're doing techno or IDM, you may want that instead of a more traditional, obvious, this is a snare, this is a kick drum. I mean, they both do kick drums, they both do snares, but they approach them in different ways. Um, one thing that's interesting is Emergent Drums uh, relies on online generation, so it uses essentially uh, uh, Audiolab server farm. Uh, Audiolab then uses a very large uh, set of models to generate samples and transfer them back down to your plugin. So you do need to have a continuous connection to generate new sounds. Mace is all internal. Uh, it's based on locally stored model files, which I'm gathering are not as large and maybe not as uh, shall we say, complete, but um, you don't need to be online to do it. Uh, the other big difference between the two products is uh, price. Uh, Emergent Drums is 150 bucks at current time. I've heard the price is going up when they hit 2.0. Uh, Mace is 20 So there is a pretty big price difference in there. But again, the, the target markets are fairly different. Mace is much more aimed at doing sort of weird percussion sounds, whereas Emergent is intending to become your primary drum machine someday. Uh, let's take a look at these two. So let's start with Emergent. They both look pretty similar when it comes right down to it. You, you know, you've got the 16 pads, uh, you've got, uh, you assign a model to each one, uh, you generate 
uh, a drum sound. They've got uh, AR, in, well, in this case, AR. Um, in uh, Mace, it's ADSR. Uh, but there's high pass, low pass. Um, you've got tuning, volume, panning, all that stuff. Uh, one thing that's interesting about Emergent is when you generate a new sample, you can determine with this different slider whether it's a completely random sample or if it's going to be similar to the one you've got or somewhere in between. So you can change the amount of difference. Uh, so yeah, you get uh, a, like a kick drum, snare, clap, different kind of kick, random, which tends to be more percussion-y, different snare, hi-hats. The hi-hats are surprisingly good. So if you don't like, say, that kick drum, you just hit uh, generate, generates a sample, takes a little bit. Now that's a very different kick drum than the one we had, but let's say I want to tweak it a little bit, change the similarity. So that's got some noise at the end, but it's still sort of similar to the one we had. Change the release time, so. So. Yeah, and, of course, you can go through the generations as well, so you can iterate back through which, um, which ones you've, you've uh, already generated. You can do that in uh, Mace AI as well. Uh, Mace AI, on the other hand, generates much different kinds of sounds. So, they, as you can see, the models are very different. There's not kick snare, hat, etc. You've got sort of specific kinds of characters. You've got lo-fi kicks, uh, cyber symbols, metal foley, techno kit, which is sort of random different kinds of drums, cyber vocals, foley shots, glitches, lo-fi toms, gritty synths, um, alien SFX, cyber snares. So you end up with uh, things that sound more you know, like this. They definitely do have much more of an electronic kind of glitchy vibe to them. And I would say sometimes you get a snare like that that doesn't really sound like a snare that you would expect, so you have to tweak it a little bit. a little more snare-like, or you could just regenerate it entirely. That's a little more snare-like. So, as you can see, they're, they're pretty different. They're, they're taking the same idea and approaching it from two different ways. Uh, so if you were to put these together into kind of a loop, uh, just a random drum loop here, this is, this is what Emergent would do. And that's the same loop played by Mace. So as you can see, they're they're pretty different in terms of the way they sound. They, like I said, they approach the they approach the same concept from a different direction. Uh, and this is for Mace. They call this the early access library. They they claim they're going to have a lot more. Um, in the future, I, I don't know if they're going to sell them as add-ons or if it's going to be just refinements of these. Um, but, you know, right now this is a $20 plugin. And as a $20 plugin, you kind of can't go wrong if you're doing techno or IDM or something along those lines. Um, Emergent, as you can tell, Emergent has, I don't want to say a higher quality of drum, but it's a much more specific kind of drum sound. It, it is, for all intents and purposes, aimed for a more 
professional kind of sound. You're going to you could work this into a pop song or you could work this into a hip hop song. Um, there's nothing particularly outlandish about the sounds. There are some options for generating random glitches and that sort of thing. There is a, I believe, a glitch noise. Uh, yeah, there we go. Glitch noise. Um, so generate that one. See what that sounds like. Yeah, that's a glitch. And there is apparently some uh, facility to use imported samples. I haven't worked with this yet. This is something new in this latest version um, that I've downloaded um, that will allow you to work with imported samples and generate stuff based off of that, which is kind of interesting. Um, so you could take your own sample libraries and build things off of that. They also have this creamy and crunchy. Um, they're not real clear on what those do, but they are definitely a way of changing the character of the sound. Uh, crunchy versus creamy. I guess creamy is probably a higher... I don't know if it's a straight-up higher quality or if it's just a you know, smoother sound, less, you know, less distortion, less saturation kind of thing. Um, but you have that option as well. So, and you can export all of the drum sounds from either one. Uh, so here you can you, know, you hit export and it lets you, you know, choose where you want to export all your, all your drums from that. Uh, you can do the same here. Um, here you can just drag them to your DAW. So you can drag all the samples to the DAW, or you can drag them one at a time. So, you know, uh, so if you wanted to put them into your productions in a different format, that's how you would do it. Uh, additionally, if you export them, you know, you can do things like uh, additional processing, additional filtering, transient compression, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and honestly, when I've worked with either of these in any sort of capacity, I almost always add additional production. I mean, beyond the standard drum production of, hey, I'm going to compress the drum bus, or I'm going to add some reverb, or I'm going to just, you know, EQ the snare so it fits better at the mix. I'm actually going to go through and do some editing on the, the resultant sound. But both of these produce pretty usable uh, starting points for that, and they do it remarkably quickly i mean honestly uh, this kick sound um i could probably generate that in some other synth or drum machine with a little work but it would take me a lot longer than just hitting the regenerate button and you know hitting regenerate until i get something i like and something that fits is pretty easy um and saves me some time so what this comes down to is these are end up being time saving tools more than they are just uh, AI sound design tools. As for the ethics of AI, I mean, there's been a lot of discussion as to whether or not uh, AI with, you know, Mid Journey and Dolly and all those other uh, arts packages are, are, are uh, endangering the sort of sanctity of human produced art. I think this might be kind of playing in a different ballpark because it's generating individual sounds, individual hits and impacts and things that aren't really complete works in and of themselves. So I, I think we're probably on fairly safe ethical grounds there, um, whether or not that's a concern to you. Uh, in something like this, I, I just don't think it's really a problem. It may be someday when these tools get advanced enough that they start, you know, writing whole drum lines for you or, you know, things like that. Uh, we haven't gotten there yet, and I think it's going to be a while before we start seeing that. Now, they're both interesting tools. I, I have used them both now in a number of places. Um, what's particularly interesting to me is that there is a, such a divergence in price point between the two. I will give um, Audio Lab credit, uh, they, they, because they're running a server farm, they have a lot higher overhead. Um, they were discussing using this, uh, as a, uh, subscription platform, uh, 
that would you know be a smaller fee but spread out over longer amounts of time but the uh, user community kind of vetoed that and to their credit they agreed with the users and said okay we won't do that um so i guess good for them there but it is a fairly expensive package um if you're a hip-hop producer or something like that and you absolutely prize having unique sounds i mean this may be worth the the the, the investment uh because you get good quality sounds like pretty close to usable sounds right out of the gate um and it's it's pretty unlikely that you and any other producer are going to have the same same sounds uh if you're using a tool like this uh, mace you know it's 20 bucks you kind of can't go wrong with it but a lot of the sounds are weird and frankly if you're not doing certain types of music they will not necessarily be useful to you uh, they're useful to me because when i do techno or when i do some sort of more uh, idm dance music or industrial type stuff it's um it's useful to have these kind of grungy gritty metallic sounds um i mean glitch errors is a whole thing right there um sometimes the sounds are a little weird foley shots cyber rides metal yeah they don't really necessarily sound like traditional drums but that may be what you're going for and in a lot of cases it's what i'm going for so if that's the kind of sound you're looking for for 20 bucks it's you know it's it's kind of hard to beat that uh i don't know the price may go up once it's in full access because right now it's it's early access so we're not quite in full production yet but uh you know like i said if you get it now for 20 bucks you kind of can't go wrong so yeah we've got these two products uh they they don't directly compete with each other but they are using the same sort of principles uh and very similar user interfaces uh, so uh, that's ai as it's starting to enter sound design and that's really fascinating to me the youtube algorithm knows all sees all and controls our lives so in the spirit of that Please like this video and subscribe to our channel for more studio videos and music videos. Also, feel free to check out Null Device, Clack, or Edgecase Development Corporation on Bandcamp or your favorite streaming site. Thank you.